So it just tells me about those lines, but I can't see. So if I go over here to utilities, measure, I have an area thing there, right? I could do that and then start picking points. Come over the area. That's a lot of points, and on especially on like this one, you have a lot of points you have to be picking because you have to pick every single one of those corners. Mm -hmm. Kind of a waste of time. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can go to draw or right here polyline. So I go to polyline, and so it starts out kind of like the line command, right? It tells me from my start point, I can go. Now I've got a lot of other options. I'll kind of go through this in a little bit. This width is not the width that you want to use for that. Because here you want two separate lines, one for the outside and one for the inside. That width actually makes just a wide line. So if you want a line to print out really wide, you could do a width on it so it print out wide, but it's not going to give you two pieces of geometry. So I could just going to draw something kind of like that. So I picked that. See now that now it's all one line all the way around. I did a, another one. Look at my options down here. See, I have the close option, just like I did with the line command. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's a difference now with the polyline between clicking on this point and typing C. If I just click on that point, it's still open. Those two points don't connect to each other, so you, it doesn't think it's closed. If you type C, then it becomes closed. So if you're using a pie line and you're going to make a closed shape, you want to use the C option. And so um, now if I go to properties of that, now I get an area. Or if I go to the area command, I can tell it object and pick on that line, you know, give me the area. Or if I go to list, it'll tell me the area. <clears throat> so polyline's really good for that. Like on this one, let's say I wanted to have that point 0.1 there. So I can offset it, point 0.1. See what it did? All my corners stayed nice and clean. What would have happened if I had those just as regular lines and I just offset all those lines by themselves? How would it look? Oh, okay. Like that, right? It also lines, but I'd have to clean up the corners now. Yep. But as it being a pie line, it knows that that needs to stay connected, and it makes it nice and even. Okay. So now I've got two polylines, but it's opening. So what, I, what should I do there? Do you want to close them, yeah, or is there another option? How can I close those things? Draw a line. Draw a line. Go line, there to there, there to there. So you have to do that every time you have open lines, you want to figure the area in, yeah. in between. Yeah, there needs to be one continuous yeah, thing. Now it's four line. different things, right? Now it's this outside part line, the inside part line, and two lines there. So I need to join those together. How can I join those together? Can I use the join command? Right here, can I use the join? Do that with polyline. <laughs> Look at the example. Or 3D polyline. No. Join, they need to be end to end. 
Oh, horizontal or vertical? Yeah. So what I want to do is actually I want to go here and go to polyline edit. So I'll pick on that. Now I can just pick one of them and say join. Pick everything. Enter. And now you can see I have an option to open. That means that it is closed. So I can hit enter. And I can go to properties on that or type list. Now you can see the area. Okay. So on this one, you do the same thing. You'll draw the outside any way you want. You can do polylines, you can do lines, and then turn them into polylines using that p-edit command. Because when you do p-edit, if you click on a regular line, it'll ask you, hey, this isn't a polyline, do you want to turn it into one? And you say, of course I do. <laughs> and then you pick on it, or you say yes, and then, then, then you can join the other stuff to it. Okay? So you can either do it as one polyline, or you can do it as lines, and then make them into a polyline at the end. It just depends on how you want to do it. It's going to take the same amount of steps, just one extra enter if you do it as regular lines. Okay, questions? One thing, to, that's a common thing here is this corner right here. If you come around like that, how do you get from here to there? Can you use polar coordinates to give you, yeah. like, give you that? use polar coordinates. You would think you can, but you have something else you want to say, right? What do you need for polar coordinates? Angle. That's you need distance. the angle, so you know the angle, right? You know that's 45. Distance. But in distance, what distance? Uh, 45. You need no. this distance, right? Yeah, that's 0.50. Uh, no, no, that's 0.5. No, that's 0.5. That is longer than 0.5. You'd have to do some trig to figure out what that is. Or Pythagorean theorem. It's like the square root of two or I don't know. Square plus two some, square so it's something plus two that I don't know. So what's an easier way you can get from there to here? Can you just use close? The no. circles? No, because no, you don't have another point to come from. Okay. Let's go back to week two. What are the other types of coordinates? Uh, relative? Yeah, relative, right? Because you know it's supposed to be over 0.5 and down 0.5, right? So you could say 0.5 comma negative 0.5, right? To get to that corner. So even though you're using dynamic for this point, this part you need to use the relative for. Okay? So that's why we still did that there, even though there's easier ways. Because sometimes you have to do it that way. Okay? That's something that, that's the most common problem with this, is they try and draw a line at 45 degrees and draw it 0.5 long. Okay. And then after you do this, do the area. Find out what the area is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> some other things you can do with power lines. I just did that so I can get the same polyline line both times. This one I'm going to use close on. This one, I'm just going to pick that first point again. So you can see the difference and why we want to make sure we use close. So if I go back to P edit, see this one is line and is fit. That's going to take, take these straight lines and turn them into a curve. If I go to fit, that's what happens. So let me turn on my point style so you can see the points again. So that was a fit curve. <coughs> a 
as a spline curve. So doing a spline, it kind of try to do it as smooth as possible within that shape. With the fit curve, it did it as smooth as possible going through all the points. Okay. Watch what happens if I do this one over here. Look at that corner. Because I didn't close it, both of those are staying on that corner. It's not fitting around it. If I go to the spline, same thing. It's not doing the spline in this section because it's starting there because it's not a closed shape. So especially if you're wanting to do something like that, you'd want to make sure you do the close. And what would you use that for? Uh, table, pool. Yeah, so this thing oblong. If you're doing landscape design, Water has you might want to do that or pools or something kind of organic shaped, you might want to use that. <clears throat> Um, also, there's this one. And this is just a spline. So this is a polyline that's doing a spline curve. And if I pick on this, you can see the grips still are at those points. This one is just a spline. And so it kind of combines both fit and the spline, the spline option and the polyline. So now if I pick them, you can see it's still going through my points, but also I can change the tangent. So I can tell it how it's going to be tangent. So if I just did points here, and I can pick on it, and I can go here. I can change how that's starting out when it's tangent. It's going to go over the point, tangent direction. So I can kind of change how that, that spline is behaving by going over those points. I can do the same thing here with the, with the polyline or with the spline. So I can stretch it or change it. <coughs> so splines. It's kind of the benefit of being able to pick exactly where you want the point to be. It's like here, it doesn't stay on the points. <clears throat> but this one you can't join to other things. The polylines you can join, you can have them do things. The splines are just kind of on their own. Okay? Okay, but they're not tied to the nose. I mean, yep. it, it's, it's, yeah, yeah it, you can move it around, but it, they're actually going exactly through the points you click. So like if you were doing like a topo map and you knew exactly where you wanted the points to go through, you could do it and it'd go right through those points. This option here, you'd move them off the points and it wouldn't be right anymore. Okay? But, so if I'm just kind of, and if you're doing like a landscape thing, I might do this one instead just so that I get exactly the points that I pick so it goes there. Um, yeah. So, questions? So that's basically polylines and splines. Um, oh, I told you I showed you the width, right? So when you do a polyline, the width, if I said 0.2, and then 0.2, it's a line like that. And so that the actual it's actually just kind of one big piece of line. It wouldn't. I couldn't do an area on this because there's, there's nothing really in between there. But I could also do that. You can see it's starting the same width. If I told it to start at point two and end at zero, now look what I can make. Arrowheads. And that's where I use that width option the most. Because if I want an arrowhead, that's the easiest way to make it. But yeah. if you're using the width instead of uh, the polylines, you can't figure the area? Because yeah, no area. No. Because that's, there's no, nothing in there. You still have just one line going down the middle. So you couldn't just use that to build something if you wanted another no. area? Yeah. 
there's not there's no real lines here on the outside. But if you're doing like a floor plan and you wanted to darken in the inside of some walls, if you want to polish mine that you could you could make that. You could do that and so that way it'd fill the walls. But I'll show you some other ways you can do that also later. Can the polyline that thick? You can make the polyline as wide as you want it. And that's the width, not the thickness. Because you can see there's a thickness option also. Is there? Right here, thickness. That's not the same. Thickness is a 3D thing. So, so don't do thickness, it's the width. Okay? Questions on polylines or splines? Alright. Um, so the next, that was practice three. This line right here. Those three little marks, you know what that means? So this is a, a center line, right? One small dash, big dashes, and it's green. So that's your center line. This little symbol there, the three little lines, means it's symmetric. It means the top is the same as the bottom. Okay. So that's for center line? Yeah, this is the center line, but then those three marks mean it's symmetric. It means the oh, two halves right. are equal. Look at practice four. It's a little bit more complicated, but not really too much complicated. It looks it looks harder than it is, <clears throat> and it takes me 14 minutes to walk through it. Uh, <clears throat> so, what is this? Is a top view and a front view. You want to make sure that they're lying straight up and down from each other so that way you can draw lines like from this corner straight up to get to the, this line. From that tangent point straight up to get where those stop. From that tangent point down to see where that stops. So make sure that they're lying straight up and down um, when you do it. And how do you think you would start this? What would you do first? Uh, three circles? Yeah, do these three circles, right? Because then you can get these outside circles, then you can do some tangent arcs. You just draw a line here, offset it, and then you can just start working on the bottom. So you find where, now that you know where this is, you come over and find that center, draw that in, draw that tangent arc, and then just, it's done. So it looks a lot harder than it is. And it has the video where I take 14 minutes to walk through instead of 30 seconds. <clears throat> so you can actually see it. Are you guys watching these videos? Yeah. Watching the other practice ones? Are they helping? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, I had to record this one like four times. Because I got like almost done, I'd mess up. Or I'd like stutter or something. And, oh, crap. Stop. Let's restart. Yeah, that one, I don't know what happened with the recording. It just, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize it until after I already posted it. I was like, oh, man, I don't know what happened there. Today, Luke. <laughs> and, I, and I tried redoing it, but it just wouldn't fix it, and I didn't want to record re-record the whole thing. Like, after. Um, all right, so you got those two practices to work on today. Um, remember, you can do quiz 2A and also quiz 1A again. Um, and I extended one until next week, so you can do those two quizzes. Um, also, the lab, do the work on the lab. When you get done with the lab, so if you look at the lab, so you see the drawing here, but also if you click on where it says this drawing, or if you go to the H drive and go to 4A, there's a folder called labs that has the PDF. It needs to be exact like this, um, except we haven't done dimensions yet, so don't include the dimensions. 
but your scale should be one to one. Make sure you put the lab number and the drawing number. For the title, make something up. Okay, so make, make sure you put something in the title. Some kind of, kind of verbal description of what that is. This is the lab one. But you know it's printed in yet. I haven't graded yet. Um, so make sure you put a title. Why do I make you make up something for a title? Yeah, because that's, for me, that's one of the harder things to do. Because if you're going to make something like, I make this vice thing, and I have a bunch of pieces in here, I need to know what to call them. So what am I going to call all these pieces? And that's part of the hardest, probably the hardest thing to do. Like, I know what this is doing, but what am I going to call it? So like I call this one a swivel, and this one a collar, and a handle adapter. All kinds of, just, you have to come up with names for stuff. Because it's hard to refer to it just by the part number. So names are important, so I need to make, make you guys figure out names for stuff. So, any, any other questions? So when you're done with the lab, you have it ready, call me over, I'll check it right on your screen. What? No, we haven't done them yet. You don't have to do anything for the lab until I tell, tell you how to do it. That'd be kind of stupid. Or, or mean, right? Go do it. Um, all right. So any questions? Make sure you put your initials or your name in the drawn by. You could do just your last name or initials, whatever. Because at, at work, you usually just use initials. I don't know anyone that signs drawings with names. It's always just initials. Any other questions? All right, so there's that. Um, and then for next week, work on the, the uh, next modify command. So next week we'll do rotate, stretch, scale, fill and chamfer, mirror, mirror, and array. So we'll start working on those next week. Okay? Can I actually turn the block for this week? Or for next week? Make sure you're doing your blocks. I'm going to be checking those probably tonight. Um, so make sure you're, you're up to date on your blogs um, with the system variables. Are you guys trying out the system variables now? Are you learning stuff? Something. Something? Something like that? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, knowing those system variables will help you when you do 48B next semester if you, do, if you want to get the CAD operator certificate. That's going to be 4B and 48B, and then you'll have it. Just two more classes next semester to get a certificate. <clears throat> Yeah, CAD operator. So, 4B is 3D in AutoCAD. 48B is customizing AutoCAD. And to customize it, you need to know the system variables, or at least some of them, or where, where to find them and, and how to get to them. Take those at the same time? Yep. Yeah, 4B will be Monday nights. 48B is on your own. So, what's the thing that we get 